this man is amazing, isn't he? So thank you, Milton. Uh, I don't need that. Uh, so I'm actually just going to talk to you about life and, uh, and health. So here's the interesting thing. There has never been a better time to be alive. I'm, I'm not kidding you. Because the next 10 years are going to fundamentally change the trajectory of how humanity is going to live. And I think I'm going to correct Milton in one thing. I was just sitting and texting and listening to Milton halfway through when he says, money is in the drugs. I think that is going to fundamentally go away. Right? Our medical industrial complex is built on a fundamental principles that we make money when people are unhealthy and sick. And they believe the chronic diseases are like a lifetime subscriber. If you cure them, you get rid of subscriber. So you want to keep them sick by managing their symptom rather than curing their diseases. Anytime any industrial complex becomes a parasite on humanity, humanity comes together to kill that parasite. So let's make a pledge here that we're going to kill this parasite that depends on us and keeps us sick. We're going to allow that to happen again. And that... This is the first time where individuals and a small group of people in this room are capable of doing things that require the nation states and the superpowers to do. What I mean by that is, you know, if you go back and look at space exploration used to be in the domain of not just the nation states, it was the superpowers like America, the Russia, and China who went and explored the space. And if you look at today, who is doing that? And entrepreneurs, Elon, Richard, uh, you know, Jeff, uh, you know, I, I have a company called Moon Express, the only company in the universe that actually has permission to leave Earth orbit and land on the moon. So despite all these unambitious people I just mentioned, they're still stuck in the low Earth orbit. Let's just be very clear. Now, imagine the healthcare. We thought the Obamacare is going to solve the problem of our healthcare. And then we thought that maybe the Trump care is going to solve the problem of health care. And we somehow believe that maybe the Putin care is going to solve the problem of health. Answer is no. It is us, an entrepreneur, is someone in this room who is going to solve the problem of health care. And here's why. This is the first time when the things that we used to consider physical, this body is physical body. Now we are able to make our body digital. What I mean by that is we are able to understand at a molecular level what is going on inside the human body. There is not going to be a day far behind. In the next five years, we are going to be able to understand every single biochemical activity that's happening inside the body. Now I'm going to say something really, really controversial. So just listen to me, and then I'm going to explain it to you what I mean by that is. One of the biggest disservice that we have done to ourselves has been the focus on genomics. That has been actually the set us back 10 years. The idea of the looking at the DNA and the human genomics set us back 10 years. And here's why. When you look at the DNA, DNA is nothing but like an alphabet. It doesn't do anything. It is not the genes that matter, it is the gene expression that matters. So by constantly looking at the genes, trying to find out what might be causing a disease is a fool's paradise. And here, let me tell you why I mean by that. From the time you are born, and let's assume somewhere through your life, you end up getting a diabetes. And you can do your DNA test before the diabetes, you can do a DNA test after your diabetes. It hasn't changed. You have an autoimmune flare up. You can look at the thing that's flaring up happened. Your DNA is still the same that it was before. You can look at literally any of these chronic diseases. You look at the depression. Your DNA is still the same. Why are you depressed? Why do you have anxiety? Why do you have Parkinson's? Why do you have Alzheimer's? Why do you have a PTSD? Why do you have addiction? How do you have diabetes, obesity, and you can go on and on and on. None of these diseases are DNA diseases. What really changes is your gene expression. So genes don't change, your gene expression changes. 
And I'm assuming many of you guys understand the difference between gene and gene expression, right? You look at this, see, I have to understand. I have no background in science or biology or being a physician. That means I am the most dangerous person this industry has ever seen. Because I have absolutely no preconceived ideas of what's not possible. The day you become expert at something, you become useless at it. What I mean by that is, the day you become expert, the best you can do is to improve it 10% or 15%. You become incrementalist. You can be better than anyone else, but you can never disrupt it 10 times or 100 times. That requires you to challenge the foundation of everything that expert has taken it for granted. <laughs> so I came to this healthcare industry absolutely with no pre preconceived idea, except I got sick and tired of watching the people get sick. And always, almost every story starts with your own experience. And you'll start to think about it that, you know, I'm, I'm just finishing up my project of going to the moon. If anybody's wondering, we're launching our mission to the moon next year. Uh, but having done the moonshot, the moonshot, what do you do for an encore? You do a symbolic moonshot. And I really thought about what is one thing I could do, if successful, could change the lives of billions of people that are living on the planet Earth. <laughs> and I thought about fixing, maybe I should go fix the education system, or maybe I should look at healthcare. And it turns out that problems in the education and problems in healthcare are very, very similar. In both cases, people think it's broken, people feel it's not working, and it turns out in both cases, it's actually doing exactly what it was designed to do. There's nothing broken about it. Our education system was designed to teach us skills, and we could use those skills in the industrial era for the most of our life, and life was wonderful. Today we live in the world of exponential technologies. That means any skill we learn, by the time we graduate, the skill becomes obsolete. So you have to rethink and reinvent the education system rather than thinking it's broken. Same thing in the healthcare. It was invented at times when we were dying from infectious diseases. And it does an amazing job. There very rarely people die from infectious diseases. Now there is an epidemic of these chronic diseases. And you start to think about what is really going on. And if you start to think all these chronic diseases, what happens to us? And you go back, so here's what I learned. So if you go, so first thing, here's what I did. I went and probably read several thousand research papers trying to understand what is the root cause of all these chronic diseases. And I kept reading, you know, the Parkinson's disease starts in the gut 15 years before you see the first symptom. Alzheimer is something to do with gut microbiome. You can Google depression and gut microbiome. You can Google anxiety, obesity and microbiome. You can start to look at almost every cognitive disease, every metabolic disease, diabetes, obesity, NAFLD, directly starting and influenced by gut microbiome. In fact, many types of cancer, now whether you look at, now they just proved that pancreatic cancer colorectal cancer, breast cancer, and in fact, we're just going to be announcing soon is things like oral cancer, just by looking at your saliva microbiome, we can in fact, with 90, 89% accuracy, we can predict that you have an oral cancer, just by looking at your saliva microbiome. So it turns out, all these gut microbiome and the microbiome inside the human body was responsible. What surprised me was the therapies, whether the, how effective your immunotherapy is, also depends on your gut microbiome because your gut microbiome is constantly modulating your immune system. So immunotherapy effectiveness depends on your gut microbiome. Chemotherapy effectiveness depends on your gut microbiome. And here was the research that came out just about a month ago, that people who are taking the drugs even the drug like Levdopa, which is for Parkinson's disease, in many people, that drug was being metabolized by gut microbiome. That means your microbes were eating your drugs, and there was nothing that you could do. When you take the drug, it goes into your chemical factory called gut microbiome. You pop in the pill, it goes there. It changes the molecular structure, and depends on that, 
it is the side effect and the effectiveness and side effects depends on what happens in your gut microbiome. So I am now thinking, what is this gut microbiome? And I had no idea, so I realized that what is it? If everything is related to gut microbiome, there are tens of companies doing the gut microbiome test. What is wrong? The problem is not getting solved. There's got to be something I'm missing. And what I was missing was to solve a problem, it's not about having the right answer. It's about asking the right question. And every single company was asking the wrong question. Everybody was focused on trying to find out what organisms exist in your gut. It turns out that was not the problem. The right question to ask is, what are they doing? What are they producing? Not who is there. Just like the human beings. You know there is John, there is Paul, there is Milton. But what matters is what are they doing? Are they actually plumbing, electrician, they are dishwasher? What are they doing? What enzymes they're producing is what matters. And that's led me to this uh, path of trying to understand the gene expression rather than genes. And I was told that RNA could not be sequenced. We actually found the technology at the Los Alamos National Lab. They were doing a biodefense work to be able to actually analyze gene expression. To make the longest story short, I was able to get the license for the exclusive license for the technology, launch the company. Now, we have hundreds of thousands of people who actually have taken our gut test. And by analyzing their gene expression, we are able to predict, not associate, we can predict the onset of diabetes, depression, obesity, IBS, oral cancer. We, in fact, are now doing pilot projects and at clin double-blind clinical trials with likes of Mayo Clinic, Kaiser, United Healthcare Group, UCLA, NYU, Advent Health, to show the actually working. And I'm feeling really good that I found something. It turns out this is what we knew 2,500 years ago. All diseases begin in the gut. You know who said that? Hippocrates. Then what did he say? Something really interesting. One man's food is another man's poison. Everything is personalized. And then he said something really profound. Let food be thy medicine. Let thy medicine be the food. And that's literally what we do. So by analyzing your gut, we can now have an app that tells you don't eat these foods and why. So for me, it tells me not to eat apple because I have an apple chlorotic leaf virus. It tells me not to eat spinach because I, my gut microbiome cannot digest oxalic acid. It says don't eat broccoli and cabbage and Brussels sprout because my, I'm producing way too much sulfide. And I was eating too much protein. It says your protein is being fermented in your gut producing ammonia and don't eat because it's causing inflammation. So it tells you exactly what foods not to eat and why, and tells you what are your superfoods and why. It's interesting thing is, we now have looked at hundreds of thousands of people, and fundamentally these people are, I can't make any claim, you know we're a wellness company, right? Can't make any claim. However, our customers are reporting their anxiety is gone, their depression is gone, they're losing weight, their diabetes has gone down. In fact, people are not even taking the biologics because their autoimmune systems are gone. Now, I, I'm just to tell you, these are the anecdotal stories. Anecdotes makes a good story, but they don't make a great science. So now we are actually doing the double-blind clinical trial to actually show the reversal of these things. Now, what I'm here to tell you is that if we all come together, we can, in fact, prevent and reverse these chronic diseases. We need your help. We need two million of us to come together so that we can all understand what is causing the different chronic diseases. And the day we get two million people to come together, we would solve this problem once for all. So if we are in it together, it is not my problem. It is not even your problem. It is our problem. Don't do it for ourselves. Let's do it for our children and grandchildren because we don't want them to watch them suffer from these chronic diseases. My dad passed away less than a year ago with pancreatic cancer. He didn't have to die. Only reason he died is because the 
chemotherapy. They, we told them what is causing the pancreatic cancer. All I wanted him to do was inject the antimicrobial in pancreas. They refused to do it, and I saw him die. And I told my dad that I can't save you, but I promise you I'm going to dedicate my life to saving everyone who is suffering. So here I am asking for your help. So let's come together, let's get enough people together so we have all the data we need to get out of chronic diseases. Thank you. The Q&A. Any questions? A question. Come on, guys. That gives me a chance to talk to you for a few more minutes. I'm Michael, and um, I'm very interested by removing chronic disease. I think it's very important. As a young guy, I think uh, I'm also sick that we wait that people get sick to do something. And the problem is preventive health care is not reimbursed. What do we have to wait, or what do we have to do to make it, this happen? So first of all, this whole idea. So if, how many people who claim themselves to be an entrepreneur? right? So imagine, as an entrepreneur, that is exactly how you go to die. When you look at where your money is today, is in the drugs and the current medical system. If you are going to disrupt the current system, you never want to go head on. Because when you go inside this organism called healthcare system, it's going to absorb you, it's going to release the antibody, and it's going to kill you. So the best way to get rid of this system is to go around the system. Everyone in the healthcare system wants you to stay sick. You know who doesn't want to be sick? is the person who is sick. So you go direct to consumer, even though it may not be reimbursable, that allows you to get the things moving and collect the data. Then you start going to the people who are actually interested, like self-insured employers. Right? You start to go to the people who are interested in making sure people don't get sick. So you start to find where the pain point is. And by that time, you have so much data that actually the current system will be forced to adopt it. Right? But if you go directly there to the insurance company, they will absolutely kill you. Right? So their job is to make sure you don't come in. You might think the insurance company wants you to stay healthy. They actually make money by keeping you sick. Because they have to give back under Obamacare, 85% of the premium they collect, they have to give back. So the more you are healthy, the more money they have to return back to you. So they rather keep you sick and keep increasing the premium so they make more money. Everybody, I mean everybody in the system doesn't want you to stay healthy. So if you want to really disrupt the healthcare system, do what you guys are already doing. Go to the patient directly. Bring the cost down so much that it becomes affordable. When we started the company, the cost of doing a test was $3,000 for RNA testing. We brought it down to 1,000, to 400, to 300, to 200, to 150. We're giving it for 129 now, right? This is because, you know what? We make zero. I'm not kidding, we make zero from the thing. So why do we do that? Because we want to understand what makes people sick. Because that data will allow us to find the solution, and we believe the solution is gonna lie into the food and supplements. You don't need to take a drug, and that will be the way we'll get rid of this disease and this parasite. Questions for like. Hi, uh, my name is Jake, and actually a psychiatrist getting into this, and I, I can say you're spot on here. I was, you know, genetics major working in that side, I'm with you completely. That's nothing but a, you know, it's instructions from an IKEA manual. It says nothing about what the actual product looks like. And also in here is what I think we're saying, even with a lot of the conditions in mental health especially, is your largest nervous system is your gut. So <clears throat> flat on, what I'm, I guess, trying to get in here, what you're saying is the difference between genotype and phenotype, when yeah. we talk about expression or not, but some, some terms at least, but just looking in here from, uh, I'm in the area of outside of general network, so it's, it's different, I guess, capitated way of a, more of a membership model. So I'm just trying to find anything I can to find the, the best, cheapest prices for patients. Mm -hmm. Yet I'm finding in here is we still have this mentality that insurance coverage equals healthcare. Mm -hmm. And I think that, to me, that's the biggest fallacy that, that we have <coughs> around. What if, I guess, when you're trying to talk about your product to other people, yeah. how do you negate that, that common perception we have in this country? So first of all, the good thing is that insurance companies are becoming so greedy they're increasing your copay. So as the copay is going up, people are realizing 
and that they have to end up paying so much money over time. So they rather keep themselves healthy, right? So by keeping the cost low, I think you're 100% right that our gut and our brain are connected together through the vagus nerve. And in fact, there is a tremendous amount of research that even whether it's Alzheimer or depression, how the gram-negative bacteria release LPS that causes the bind with the H cells, makes the gut permeable, infects the CNS system, goes to the blood-brain barrier and infects the brain. In fact, now they have shown from the addiction, most people who have behavioral issues, including autism, by the way, they all have gut issues. They showed the 18 people at UT Austin, they did the fecal transplant, and they reversed autism. We are doing a 5,000 autistic kid trial in Pennsylvania right now to reverse autism, right? So to some extent, people at want to stay healthy, and they are tired of taking drugs. And they know the one drug causes you 10 other symptoms, then you take 10 more drugs. And then this cause 10 more symptoms, you take 10 more drugs. And by the time you get to my age, you're taking popping more pills than blueberries, and there is a problem with that, right? So um, I, mean, I know he's probably breathing down my neck, thinking that's enough is enough. So enough is enough, and I want to thank you. And if you want to learn more, I'll be right outside. Come talk to me. Thank you. <laughs>